Okay, as a brief introduction, we are, Tuesdays we are using, going to have one hour. Of course, we are a little late today. Uh, almost one hour. And we have a pointed discussion uh, topic that is from the Sangvita Nikaya, Sagata Kavage. And we have last time or last thing also, we did not finish the Sutta. We are going to start beforehand. If anyone is having any relevant issue or some many reports or interview reports, we can take a little time and then we are going to start the traditional way, our appointed way. We are waiting if, if someone is having any special uh, circumstantial issues. Oh, uh, there is nothing from this end. Good. And uh, who has participated from the Zoom? Other than uh, Nisandwani yes, and... Other than Isanwani and Kumara, who else are appearing in the Zoom screen? Uh, actually, Bante, there are 45 participants. Oh. Individual participants, there are no other branches. So, with that knowledge, uh, no, no. with that understanding, we are going to proceed. Avasai Swami Nansi, we are currently reading Samidhi, Samidhi Sutta. Samidhi this, Sutta. Yeah, it is the 20th Sutta. In the entire Sangyuta Nikaya. Right, so just a recap of this sutta. We have the Venerable Samiddhi. Um, and it, the sutta starts saying that he is dwelling at the hot springs park. And he is bathing there. And a devata approaches him and stands in the air and says to him that... Um, he is a young bhikkhu, a young man. Why did he choose to become a monk instead of spending his youth enjoying sensual pleasures? And uh, then the Venerable Samiddhi says that as he understands it, sensual pleasures as taught by the Buddha are dangerous, they are time-consuming, and they cause stress and despair. So the Devata is confused at these words and he asks, why does the Buddha teach like this? Why does the Buddha say that sensual pleasures cause despair, cause stress and are time consuming? And so Venerable Samiddhi says that he is still a newly ordained monk and he is not able to explain in detail why the Buddha teaches thus. So he invites the Devata to go to the Buddha for an explanation. And so um, now I will start with um, after Venerable Samiddhi has spoken to the Deva, then the Devata says, But how is it, Bhikkhu, that the Blessed One has stated that sensual pleasures are time-consuming, full of suffering, full of despair, and the danger in them is still greater? How is it that this Dhamma is directly visible, immediate, inviting one to come and see, applicable, to be personally experienced by the wise? And Venerable Samid says, I am newly ordained, friend, not long gone forth. Just recently came to this Dhamma and discipline. I cannot explain it in detail. But the Blessed One, the Arahant, the, perfect, the perfectly enlightened one is dwelling at Rajagaha in the hot springs park. Approach that blessed one and ask him about this matter. As he explains it to you, so you should remember it. Yes, so the bhikkhu invites the devata to visit the Buddha. And uh, the devata says, It isn't easy for us to approach the blessed one bhikkhu as he is surrounded by other devatas of great influence. If you would approach him and ask him about this matter, we will come along to in order to hear the Dhamma. And Venerable Samiddhi says, Very well, friend. And then he approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side, and reported his entire discussion with that devata. And he adds, if that, devata, if that Devata's statement is true, Venerable Sir, then that Devata should be close by. When this was said, 
the Devata said to the Venerable Samidhi, Ask Bhikkhu, ask, for I have arrived. Then the Blessed One addressed that Devata in verse. And the Blessed One says, Beings who perceive what can be expressed become established in what can be expressed. Not fully understanding what can be expressed, they come under the yoke of death. But having fully understood what can be expressed, one does not conceive one who expresses, for that does not exist for him by which one could describe him. So this is, uh, I, am go- I am about to read the singular version, but before that I would like to see, I would like to share some perversions in our mind. Whenever our body becomes satisfied, whenever our body becomes elated, when our body becomes thrilled, we recognize this as sex. But it is coming from, coming from the solitude. It's coming from the, uh, the uh, non-materialistic way. But our body knows only sexual pleasure and sensual pleasure. So whenever non-materialistic pleasure happens, body is always referring and consulting the materialistic pleasure or the luxuries. So this is happening in the first jhana. In the first jhana, vitakka vichara is there and the piti sukha is suppressed. So the moment the vitakka vichara go on, the piti sukha appears. Do you understand what I am telling? And that <coughs> mind is not prepared. That piti sukha is happened, viveka jam piti sukha. Happening from no seeing, not hearing, not smelling, not tasting, not touching. But body is elated. Body is thrilled and frilled. So therefore body read, some must be their sexual object. Otherwise how come that? So I attribute this situation to the Samiti. Samiti going to the early morning and cool climate and hot water bath and he remove clothes and he's drying his limbs. So it's a kind of, a, it's a young beautiful monk. So his Vitakka coming so I am so young and I am entertaining also. But I know that entertainment comes only from materiality, only from the association of senses. So that is what the Devata. So Devata comes and says, you are very contented now, you are very happy. And it is coming from the Viveka. No one is there in the bathing place, cool climate, hot water. And he is naked. Oh, meagerly clothed. He says, drying his body. So the Devata comes and he says, What the hell, guy? You are a young fellow. Go and go and entertain and maximize this and go for variety of entertainment. And behind that, he says, He knows the Buddha, his primary object. He knows the mindfulness. And he is asked the Devata, Please go and consult Buddha. Buddha, Devata says, oh, I can't go that place. It's a very prestigious Devatas are surrounded by. So therefore, Devata is cornering him and punching him. But his mind is split now. He's young. He's beautiful. His body is contented. Now, he don't know whether it is coming from the materialistic pleasure or immaterial. But immaterial pleasure he has never experienced. He's not familiar. He knows only the sensuous pleasure. So, it is very powerful. And Devata is representing the Papancha. Coming and suggesting what the hell your young life is, you must be entertaining. That's what our parents are telling us before we are getting ordained. And this is at the prime age, you must have family. You must have written a book. You must have done a business. And that is what you have to need. So, internally we know even uh, renunciation is a pleasure, not renunciated. The idea of renunciation, but mind is struggling. We are surrounded by friends and the families and everything. Everyone says, you young guy, not supposed to do this kind of uh, celibacy. And you have all the things. Just have it. And he says, it's a wastage of time. If I go there, I will trap. 
So therefore, one side of the mind, split mind, is telling, no, no, that it is my private business. I have to renounce. Or renounced. But the, the filthy side of the mind, the, the powerful side of the mind, the sexual side of the mind, so, uh, sec- sensual side of the mind says, this is immediate, you can feel. See a beautiful, go and have a blue film. And your la- young life, you can do. And hear rock music. You see the g- g- titillation and giggling, thrills and thrills. Billions of people are going there and billions of money. Have a smell. Nice smell, nice taste. And nice comfort. If there is no opposite sex, have a nice bedding. Have a nice cushion. Instead of sitting behind the water stream, go and have. And the mind says, what the senses are giving, immediate. Akalika. What you are aiming is, you have to meditate aeons of time. And at last only happening, at that time you are not there. You are no more. So what the hell? It's a it's a full disappointment. I say it's a inferential knowledge. It's a uh, deductive knowledge, or it's a rationality. So this split mind, well explained by Krishnamurti. Each and every person is a split mind. West left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. So it is maybe depicting the bad side by the deva and the good side by the Buddha. And the Devata is, I can't go to the Buddha, he is very prestigious and he is living in a, such a high esteem and surrounded by powerful Devatas. So now, coming, bringing the mind back to the breath, bringing the mind back to the mindfulness, bringing the mind to the present moment is that you have to bring that Devatava to the Buddha. Definitely you know Buddha gave priority. The prestigious people will be kicked off. It will be taken. But Devata says, I am sorry, I am a very, very minuous and nominal Devata. I have no access to the Buddha. So imagine young girl and a young boy in a garden. Boy in front of a girl. And a girl in front of a boy. The Pandita Saito says, how much defilements they are creating. But they have not touched each other. They are love-making. Kind of proliferation, how many songs, how many films, how many advertisements, how many gardens, how many capital cities, how many leaders are telling it is innocent. It's immediate. So what the Buddha says, immediate thing is here and now. Not the achieving Nibbana in time to come. And if you know, if they bring the mind back to the, back home, here and now, then the Buddha, Devata and the, our split mind can have a fair judgment, fair court. This is not happening. Yogis have no that confidence. They think that the Buddha must come here. What the hell Devata are coming and titillating me to the other side. So innocent me, what to do? I am falling prey into that titillation. So that is what girls and boys Today, more than any other time, they are thinking about the renunciation in a spiritual way or committing suicide. It's very common. Or instead, killing someone. Or to go for addiction. They know bad. Addiction bad. They, they are definitely they know. But they are doing. Because that split mind is a burn in the candle from both the ends. So therefore, using this epithet and this example... It says this is a struggle going against the grain. This is the struggle all young people are doing. When you become old age, your knowledge is too much, very little contentment happening. So they are, they are talking about the Buddhism and Patishampa, they are not, all this nonsense. They are taking this as weapon because they don't have direct experience because they are the, the prolific age gone. They, they, they have, they know what you call that uh, seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, they have done at the failure. So they can't justify spiritual contentment. So therefore, they are the people running the Buddhism today. 
they are the people running christianity today they are the people running muslims today they are the running people other religious leaders they are culprits they are rogues behind robe so no one young girl or boy get the proper answer or proper justification proper deductive knowledge proper uh, inferential knowledge but they are end out with they are their possibilities are there potential is there so our discussion is to give helping hand and whenever we are confronted with this kind of a balancing either the buddha or the god people are much happy with god each and every god believer knows we can't go to the buddha buddha is surrounded by very powerful gods so they have their own regiment their own camp because buddha is too much it is very very transcendental we can't so he or she asking samiti we are giving kissing and hugging and everything buddha is far away person why don't you listen to me god will kiss you buddha will bless you bless you therefore many people are happy to have god because they are giving immediate thing or oh, otherwise pro- professing that all the universities are invariably doing this all the universities it's a hidden curriculum they have and government says you must undergo education it's a it's a capital punishment young children some people are very prominent and smart in education but many are failure so they are the subject successful people are the rulers they say what the hell we got everything we got the subject we got the money we got everything what the hell you can't educate that is why everything is but that is not the life life is failure also so failure success also failure so they are aiming, not aiming at self exploration never present day education never if they are going to do lot of troubles lot of troubles the the british government is asking why the health health minister is pres- not prescribing mindfulness they have taken to the parliament and giving a long lecture he says the health ministry is under the influence of the pharmaceutical industry they are not about the well being of the people so therefore i understand why you are not prescribing mindfulness american senator also there is one person he said mindfulness is free no equipments no knowledge no female male difference no order non order no religious no language so being so why they are not prescribed they are talking about the undp uno imf and world health organization big organization all are part and parcel and limbs of the mara if you go to an organization they are thinking about their sustainability they never think about individual liberation so therefore the sutras giving kind of a picture but if you put it to wine self you are the buddha you are the god you are in the present moment and split mind going against the grain but even you are not crossing even you are not cut, cutting across the current <clears throat> this very knowledge is enlightening this very knowledge is full of deductive knowledge we are all equal in deductive knowledge we are not catalyzing it we are run by the immediate results immediate sense pleasure buddha says sigmund freud says sexual behavior your sex can explain all your behavior so therefore western early western as they saw is a jewish phenography because he explain everything through the sex buddha is little diluted sensual pressure so whole world is blindly following all the knowledge as worldly knowledge is to the sensuous spirit they don't see it as a crime i have a family we can look at the film we can look at the advertisement we can look at the sensuous pressure no harm but how many of people get addicted and ultimately ruin in their life 
organizations are very highly talking but ask this organization leader whether he is self aware whether he is mindful whether he is taking care about his behavior no so i started reading the western book i learn a lot westerners came and told bhante these bloody fellows are not responsible about their behavior or the um, uh, ethical or morally moral responsibilities then i told never mind i am a bumpkin coming from the village i can understand what they are telling ultimately it is robbed by the buddhist scripts presenting in a prolific way we pay for the lecture when you come back to the sutta you can decode it so therefore it is a half way sometimes helpful to understand but early buddhist tracts always started with namo buddhaya paying respect to the buddha present day books never dedicated to uh, buddha dhamma sangha dedicated books are talking about nonsense very lowly things but we are not lowly people we have dedicated we are practice and we have gone to this spiritual non materialistic pleasure but without proper interpretation either we fall into the sensuous pleasure or we think mind is puddled boring monotonous i have to do something so gurjaf is telling if you are going to do something simple thing is you lose the mindfulness being that friction living in the friction that dukase dara city or forbearance no one respect because it says we have technology we have press the button and get everything done we have money we have infrastructure why we should we worry why should we suffer are you sadistic or misogynist why i have my own rights to practice my sadistic cause misogynism and that is what the buddha buddha in a way explain as dukkha satcha truth of suffering why god created religion not talking about the suffering they are the creator of suffering they are the creator of holy wars they are the creator of all these pharmaceutical industries war, war machine media money makers prostitution rupa lavani ra mukad ge cosme cosmetics this thing you can see how the girls are used for this uh, advertisement how much boosting up with the skin coloration and making curvatures why not and present day boys also caught up when we were young boys are not so but nowadays it is difficult to understand whether he has a sexually female or male all are males sorry all are females thinking they are males ladies also think we are males males they don't look at their genitals they are looking forward hardly they see they have a male genital organs so therefore uh, this is i am maybe some buddhist people may be criticizing me telling that i am going to give a different perspectives but i invite you and very recently only <clears throat> i thought of sharing and talking and exploring into this uh, niramisha sukha appealizes sexual pleasure sukha when it is happening young meditators are lost because they can't talk about they are already committed they think the meditative pleasure or non meditative pleasure because niramisha sukha they think it is coming from sex it comes on the chemicals so they ulti- they in order to increase it they give up the mindfulness and try to do little bit of meddling with this uh, sexual pleasure but it is not doing permanent harm unless otherwise go to extremes but if you are by talking these things we are opening a new avenue in our brain in our neurobics and we must be very very open very very straightforward and very very not to be perverted sharp to the point so recently i met some nuns they told when you are talking these thing also you are hitting nuns and uh, how do you call cornering nuns no i told them they are more susceptible males we are discussing 
He may think I think this has a confidential and uh, private. They can't talk because the males are exploiting, exploiting, exploiting them. That is what in the tantrism happens. Directly talking about that. And after that, they are not spiritually come up to the tantrism and using girls and sex objects. So therefore it is not easy at any age, any civilization, any place of the world. But we can discuss openly. I don't think I am going against the Theravada values. I am 72 years old. Plus how many times I got committed? How many times I am going to be committed? Because whenever the, this contentment happens, whenever it is inner peace going to happen, we attribute to something. The, that character is there in Sadda, you know Sadda, Vidya Samadhi Panya. Only the Sati, only the Sati keep the topic open. Choicelessly be aware. Don't quickly attribute to the sex or sensual pleasure. Be there, but always it thinks it's boring, monotonous. I have to do this, I have to do that. Each and everything is breaking your trend. You can't, you can't be there. That is our private knowledge. We think we are knowledgeable. We are, we think we are potential people. We can do this and that. Yes. Each and everything is disturbing your humbleness, mindfulness, present moment awareness. So therefore it's a completely different kind of a perspective I presented and uh, I doubt whether anyone needs any singular translation. I open the discussion. <clears throat> we have about one half an hour and uh, you can talk pro and against. Any Any comment? Uh, you mentioned a very good point uh, about young people meditating. Um, right, that's called escapism. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have met few people uh, who practice very well, but they uh, tend to enjoy the bliss that they are generating from the practice rather than getting more um, directed towards the mindfulness. So, in such situations, um, should we really um, strictly direct them to mindfulness or should we really allow them to be there uh, considering their age and considering these mental um, attributions that usually arise in young people's mind? Mm, very difficult because uh, uh, mindfulness they have already done. They know it. But whenever mindfulness is going to give the results, they attribute it to Sadda or Virya or Samadhi or Panya. They know not mindfulness will be undermined. So this is happening Theravada in very effectively. So mindfulness results must be given to the mindfulness. That's when Jnana Purnika's two pages in the power of mindfulness exactly is talking. Sadda is very smart. He says everything is due to Sadda. Everything is my effort. Yeah, and many for your question is short answer is everything is due to Samadhi and Panya. They are utter shrewd fellows. Mindfulness is very straightforward. Sadda, Vidya, Sati, Samadhi, Panya. He says Buddha only can understand the attribution to, of the rate of the mindfulness attributed to mindfulness only the Buddha. It's not a simple task, massive task. So therefore you can say Disadvantage of attributing to the Samadhi. That's very prominent in my character. Sometimes I am too much. Because all the meditators are coming here not for mindfulness. They are coming from Samadhi. Whenever mindfulness developing, he thanks Samadhi. All the mindfulness, mindful school, mindful masters are in this blindfold situation. They are whenever reporting this person is very successful in mindfulness, they present their samadhi. That means meditation master is wrong. That means uh, master trainers are wrong. So I try my best. So I am unpopular. I understand. But they wanted to show something. But samadhi is such a luring thing. Luring thing. 
ஹோல் ரிலீஜியன்ஸ் ஆர் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் சமாதி அண்ட் பஞ்சா சத சத்தா செல்ஃப் கிரண்டைசேஷன் செல்ஃப் அக்ரண்டைசேஷன் people are very happy masters also happy teachers also students also happy they have a camp why not i mean it's a, it's a immaterial pressure but attribution is turn direct path is mindfulness whenever you take a turn is coming back to the same point again so that is well explained in power of mind where the no boundary how the crooked line and the straight forward line straight forward line is very boring directed to the infinitum and they are center the crooked line they have a center yeah, straight line center is laksha is in infinitum so people can't see any objective object you can't see any result so therefore their meditation is a gateless path pathless path should that happen before starting meditation or should happen while meditating or should understand after the enlightenment is completely open issue no one can decide so the god can come the benefit benevolent people can come and benefactors come come all are attributing to the aiza sadda o vidya o samadhi o panya no one understand if you understand you are already enlightened but then and there you have to understand there are no tablets no operations no proper place for that there is no proper method it's a electric is impromptu if that is there you are in any trouble but mindfulness is intact whatever the phrase you have mindfulness is intact at that time the other party very difficult to say that mindfulness is the secret they think they should have a magic formula magic formulas are all in samatha traditions i have observed 50 years they have lot of magic formulas people are talking and hilariating and giggling and jig frills and thrills but you see what they are what is their main theme slight perversion from the mindfulness to the samadhi or oh, otherwise too much of virya they are self destructive or mortification for us monks are all in that very difficult to save they are messagists they are sadistic they think virya i mean striving the striving is very much necessary at the beginning but later you have to tadupaga virya vahana attain as the progress happen to get rid of virya Let it happen by effortless way, but not at the beginning. At the beginning, when you are opening the car, you have to give the full throttle. Otherwise, it's very difficult to start the engine. To make the heap of iron, you have to enter into the first gear. Lot of fuel, lot of gas. Once that uh, come up to the certain momentum only, you can go to the second gear. You can understand. Engineers can understand, but drivers can understand. It depends on the... ramp and the weight of the vehicle and the cap- horse power so they have to smoothly you have to put it into the second gear and then less fuel third gear top gear at the top gear no brake very difficult to brake so when i go to drive a license i ask for bicycle license earlier there was a in the application paper they are writing bicycles before writing that there is a space after the passing exam we put heavy vehicles and bicycle police knows the trainer learner knows the candidate i know i put bicycle and in the application there is a space before bicycle it is heavy vehicles and bicycle so i went there and he asked questions he says now at that time i had a 185 bike very very handy bicycle he says when you are overtaking what gear you should go then i told top gear no 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 actually if you to stop when you are overtaking no control in the top gear you have to go in third gear so what the young people are happy to be go in the third gear while you are overtaking you know full boom i am pass i pass exam 
But I learned that example, uh, that l- lesson from the traffic sergeant. It happened in Maraville, I think. I don't know where I was. I got a heavy vehicle license, but I <coughs> interview was made at the bicycle license. This is how in Sri Lanka we give license. That is what Kalmatana Chari is doing. They just give Samatha and give the license for enlightenment. They only write Samatha. It is verifiable. It is it's full of thrills and frills. And ultimately, it is now you are enlightened. So, what the people succumb to the situation is either they have to commit, they have to confess or commit suicide. A lot of people about to commit suicide. They are meditators, successful meditators, wrong attribution, mindfulness is qualities of mindfulness and the results are attributed to the Samatha. It's utterly due to the teacher's mistake. You have to tell whether they like it or not, keep the mindfulness intact. The, uh, the Samiti must understand, take that deity, the Devata to the Buddha. You see, I can't go there because Buddha is so high, high spiritual person, I can't reach. No, no, you come with me. Buddha bring back to the here and now I am. It's, it's a common lesson, nothing to learn, nothing, nothing titillated, nothing dramatic. So therefore, we are, when we are living in this spiritual life, uh, we are daily, we are confronting this kind of events, 10, 20 per day maybe. Sometimes 10, 20 events in one sitting. Because our good and bad of the meditation is not attributable to the mindfulness. You are always talk in terms of Samatha. When the Samatha happened, what the hell, I am, I am already enlightened. I, am, I can give example to the others. I can write a good exam, my interview report. Our teacher is not dynamic. He is not happy, happy with me because he has not gone up to that Samatha level. That is why he is uh, envious with me. That's why Avaloka Amru is telling. So read the first two pages in the Power of Mindfulness. Very well explained. Uh, power of Mindfulness. Jnana Ponika. So I, I always quote that. He said the qualities of mindfulness attributed to the either Sadda or sab- Virya or Samadhi or Panya. These are the present day books. But the Buddha never taught. The books are bestsellers. When you are talking and writing about mindfulness, no one take care. Because it is very, just like Kanda. You know Kanda? It is tasty. How do you call Kanda in, in uh, porridge? It is just like porridge. It is good for evening, good for morning, anytime. But not nutritious, no high protein. But replenishing the stomach. So therefore, Kandabila Vage, that is in the Sri Lankan, we say Kandabila means he is a lethargic person. Nika Kandabila Vage. What's that? Yes, Bhante, uh, what's I, um, our, something you said about uh, Virya and forest monks, they keep struggling, striving, striving, but uh, the way you said that in the beginning that is necessary and afterwards it is not uh you know something that needs to be pursued with so much uh energy and effort uh i i i was just thinking that there there are many instances in the sanyutta nikaya where the buddha says that that one who has reached there that muni that arahant he neither he's neither lethargic nor does he strive he is not attached to being free and is not attached to sensual pleasures. First Sutta in the Sangata Nikaya. First Sutta, Ogatarana Sutta. Not striving, not uh, hurrying or tarrying. If you are striving too much, you will take taken by the, the current. If you are hurrying, hurry. if you are tarrying, you will sink. So current is very fast. So you have to go against the current but in a in a balanced way, present day politics means balancing, economics means balancing, social science is balancing. Today people expecting the outside people to come and outsource to get our balance. 
psychiatrists, doctors, lawyers, they are saying, okay, okay, we can do it for you. That, that bloody fellows are not mindful. And once again with the Buddha's reply in this sutta, looks like it's just circling back to the same theme of emptiness, nothingness, the state of non-attribution. And uh, I'm personally starting to see that the Buddha, he really spoke about this sunyata so many times everywhere, not giving, not expressing things, because once you give an attribution to something, then right there is where you are. That is right where the I, the I making, the ego, that is where the I is born. So the Buddha just keeps repeating this again and again and again. And uh, my, I, I just keep wondering why in, in Theravada, this is not, it's not promoted as much as it is in other sects of Buddhism like Zen or some Tibetan Buddhism, they pay so much attention to this emptiness, this sunyata, but... But uh, Sin and uh, Theravada, uh, the Mahayana, they can under you can have to understand, they are gaining the energy by blaming Theravada. That is, no one can read by reading the book. They are always hacking Theravada. They are always uh, misunderstood, dis, uh, dis, uh, un- under- underestimate Theravada. That's their source. So therefore, those who are practiced Theravada and fail, Mayan is very good. Because it's a reaction. It's a very prolific. It is the blood, young blood. It is a very revolutionary. Because Theravada. But they have to blame something. But we are masters in Theravada. But we are not taken away by the Mahayana. Therefore, Bhikkhubodhi wrote an uh, article telling that be careful about Advaita Vedanta. That is the way. Te- once you practice Theravada, when you come up to that level, something you are facing very boring. Something you are facing at no thrills, no frills. There are people come and say, come with us. We can give you that this thing. Mahayana is giving in wholesale business. Um, uh, he, uh, Hinduism, you will little in the retail business. And whenever you read, they are hacking Theravada. Present the evolution in the in the political science also. There should have some mistakes. Then only you can have revolution. There should have some kind of unfair situation. They, they never attribute, they never say thanks to the unfair situation. Unfair situation is a norm. But they take hiatus from that and come out with the very smart answers. So young people are taken away. That is what the advertisement means. That's one titillation. That is why the new faculties in the each and every university. They are reacting to the old professors. Hack them and whack them. And then the new professor is getting a chance. Old professors, what to do? Because their research time must go on. And people are not respecting. Now department, now department head. New line, new subject start. All are in the same pot. So therefore, Theravada, don't worry. The boredom is the real indicator. I am progressing. Bear it up. Don't adjust. Don't try to refine it. Don't try to be a smart uh, to I am the answer. I have to answer it. No, I am not answerable. I have to bear it up. Sustainability. They have very less energy. <clears throat> I have a wide view. Um, thousand and one examples are there. You have to interpret and get the uh, interpretation, your own interpretation. Don't believe majority. Don't believe already understood professors. They are idiots. Mind your own business. Be mindful. Uh, Bhante, may I finish the rest of the sutta? Yeah. Right. So, um, after the Buddha's response, the Buddha asks, If you understand Devata, speak up. And the Devata says, I do not understand in detail, Venerable Sir, the meaning of what was stated in brief by the Blessed One. Please, Venerable Sir, let the Blessed One explain it to me in such a way that I might understand in detail the meaning of what he stated in brief. And the Blessed One says, One who conceives I am equal 
better or worse, might on that account engage in disputes. But one not shaken in the three discrimination does not think I am equal or better. If you understand, spirit, speak up. And the Dewata says, In this case too, venerable sir, I do not understand in detail. Let the Blessed One explain it to me in such a way that I might understand in detail the meaning of what he stated in brief. And the Buddha further expounds, He abandoned reckoning, did not assume conceit, he cut off craving here for name and form. Though devas and humans search for him, here and beyond, in the heavens and in all abodes, they do not find the one whose knots are cut, the one untroubled, free of longing. If you understand, spirit, speak up. And the devata says, I understand in detail, venerable sir, the meaning of what was stated in brief by the Blessed One thus. One should do no evil in all the world, not by speech, mind or body, having abandoned sense pleasures, mindful and clearly comprehending, one should not pursue a course that is painful and harmful. And that's the end of the sutta. Yeah, that uh, Devata at last he says, Papangna kaira. There's nothing called evil thing. Uh, verbally and mind. I mean, even if you do, uh, don't do it. But whatever happening to the mindfulness, that's no good and bad. Don't do it. Then society will come and penalize you. There's no bad thing as such. Uh, not desire. Even without desire, basic needs are naturally coming for all the beings. That's why people are living happy to live in their groups. In the group traveling, they get the security, get the food, I mean, some leftovers and that kind of thing. And therefore, people are happy to live in their groups because they know being monks, we our four, four requisites are naturally given. Just also one person asks, Manti, what do you need? If you're not asked, if you're not giving, I ask other person, he told this. May I prepare? Then I told that we have enough. Then what are the sizes? And then I told, don't waste my time. I am not in need. My, my four requisites are fulfilled. I mean, too much. Not the fulfilled. So therefore, nothing to worry. So people, monks are always asking this and that and that. But this is not for the Nibban. It is for the sensual pleasure. Whatever they are asking is for the sexual or not the sensual pleasure, sexual or sensual pleasure. They think it is their right, monks' rights. But four requisites abundant. We have enough. If it is not there, please let me know. I can take care. I have given a open ticket. But I am a chief here. I know things are abundant here as much as. So I, I share with them. So that itself is contentment rather than the materiality. <clears throat> and have the clear comprehension and the mindfulness. And uh, don't try to see the monetary or don't try to see materialistic pleasure. So when the Devata is telling that, appear like Devata is enlightened. But no. If the bloody Devata lured that young monk go and have pleasure. So therefore that titillation also don't take seriously. And this last statement, I mean it's a very well versed and well balanced and grammatical statement. That don't expect that is that Devata is above the Buddha. So we are believing it because that's a kind of a change happened within this few dialogue. Changing happened. So therefore now at least in front of the Buddha, at least in front of the, the Samiti Tero, Devata is kind of a confession. That's the way I understand it. But we, our monks also, we go to the in front of the lay people and appear like a god, appear like enlightened. And we use sermons. Don't think they are enlightened. But this is called deductive knowledge. It's called inferential knowledge, acquired knowledge. It is perfect. 
but not with the experience, not with the direct touch. But there is some messages there for us. We can understand changes can happen. By, by happening, that kind of uh, changing, don't expect the inner is changed. No, you have to practice a long, long way. But you have accepted to verify. It takes long time. So keep on doing. Do the same mistake the Devata done. Otherwise, you will, Devata never go to Buddha. Do you understand? Due to his mistake only, he got a chance to see the Buddha. And after seeing the Buddha, it give a <coughs> statement like enlightened. That bloody luring situation and disenlightenment is exactly the same. This is a cheating of mind. So we must not carry it away by the second statement. Or we must fall into the first trap into the for, for state. This is what happened in our mind. This is what happened in our prolific thinking in front of a question. Both are there. The bad devata and the good devata. So we have to understand which to what we are attributing. That indicates who am I. We are always attributing. We can't do away with that. We are very judgmental. Very, very quite uh, decisive. So you have already decided. You are being judged. We are not. Being monks, we are not uh, bounded to give our judgment. But know the, all the possible ways and means and pros and cons. But if someone is telling you, you must judge, I will kick him. No, my monkhood is not for someone to come and interpret terms. You must do that, you must do that. I mean, they can suggest. But I am not committed. Because I know how difficult under such circumstances to keep the mindfulness intact. No one is helping us. Everyone is, mis how do you call it, eccentric. Make it, make us eccentric. Ultimately, we are the, I am the person suffering. By satisfying the other external bloody fools. Asevanacha Balana. You know Asevanacha Balana? Mangala Sutta, first verse. Don't associate fools. We are always associating fools. Even that we are being a monk is a great, great achievement. Associating so much of fools. Foolish food. Foolish Senasana. Foolish robes and foolish medicine. And still we are try to be at least one split second mindful. That non-judgmental thought moment, how it saved, how it's saving us, enlightenment. So therefore we are great warriors. We try our best. We are not going to satisfy someone. I mean, we are sharing and we are co-practitioners, that is a separate issue. But we are associating so much of Bala. If you get uh, majority in the election, you are the biggest fool. So all the Bala people are the people helping you. We are thinking, people are corrupted, politicians are corrupted. No, people are corrupted. Corrupted people are the pointing their own best friends, best liars. So, uh, Pajatantra, that means democratic. Buddha is not democratic. Buddha is take care about here, now I am. It's monopoly or oh, oligopoly. Oligopoly is group implementation. But popular, popular idea, never the truth. A popular leader is cheating himself. But without that, we can't run the society. So you have to pay the highest salary for him. Well, he's balancing such a thing. And so he must have sex, he must have drugs, he must have the, the gambling, and he must associate the thugs. I mean, very, what the hell they can do? They are criticizing others, thuggery. But political and leadership, whenever the leadership happens, you are corrupted. Because you are getting the majority Majority means majority of fools are around you. Very difficult. So we have to pay enough for them. So it is time up. Don't try to be a leader. Try to be a leader to yourself and don't follow someone 
because everyone is never thinking about your well-being. They are deciding about their career. So mind your own business, be mindful. Am I too much? Am I too harsh? Thank you, Swami Nuhanse. Um To wrap up the session, um, may our relatives and all beings share in the merits produced by today's teaching. May all celestial beings protect the Dhamma exposition and the, disp- and the dispensation of the Buddhist teaching for a long time. May the seeds that have been planted in our hearts grow, producing path, fruition, and Nibbana. I invite you to join in the recitation of the traditional Pali verses for sharing merits. <laughs>